Hi, Phil Aston here from Now Spinning Magazine with another ranking video. I know I keep saying I'm going to do these and every so often they slip through and join the queue of the others that I've said I'm going to do for you. And this one, which is going to be just ahead, seriously, of the UFO and Deep Purple live album ranking videos is Judas Priest. Now, I think I've got a list of 23 albums here, so I hope I have, because otherwise I'm not going to make it down to number one. Now, when I do ranking videos, they are based on the albums that I play the most. So they're not based on historical data saying that this one isn't as good as that one or whatever, sales figures or anything. So I know that all of us get emotionally attached to a lot of these things. Equally, if the album is at number 23, it doesn't mean it's rubbish. It just means I play it the least compared with the album that got to number one. You know that I cannot get enthusiastic about being negative. And being a musician, I find it very hard to say something is rubbish anyway, because songs are like children to musicians and it's like telling someone their child is ugly as someone said in one of the comments and I thought that was a wonderful way of putting it so whatever is at number 23 20 19 even it's there because I played less than the ones that are in the top five okay Judas Priest here we go and what will be number one what will be number 23 now at number 23 is there's obviously a pile of stuff around me and I shall also try and put a few little anecdote stuff when I encountered some albums plus the vinyl ones if it's to hand and it is it's Jugulator is sitting at number 23 um, I felt this is what 1997 I it just didn't gel with me I know what the band were trying to do Rob Halford had a jump ship and was doing different things and experimenting in his own way and I felt that the band you know, were obviously trying really hard to tap into what was going on around them with new metal and stuff but it didn't it didn't quite gel with me and even the pixelated cover of the kind of heavy metal creature feature on the front it, it didn't work now, what tends to happen when I do these ranking videos is I, I end up revisiting some things that sit at the bottom because I'm staring at this now thinking, when was the last time we played this film? And I know some of you will probably say, what? But that's where it is. That is at number 23. OK. I have to create another pile of stuff there. Sitting at number 22 is Demolition. Again, from the same lineup without Rob Halford. It just, this one um, I play more. Um, there's a couple of tracks on here that I did really like. Um, but in a way, I know some people felt it was more disjointed, but it is what it is. It was produced and arranged by Glenn Tipton. Um, they found they were in a difficult position without Rob. Um, and uh, obviously, but they still had the same feel as Judas Priest. But it, it is not an album that I play that often at all. So let's have a quick shuffle um, at the at the booklet while I'm here. I mean, no rush. Um, so KK Downing and Glim Tipton wrote, I think, nearly most of the, most of the music, didn't they? Um, if I'm looking through, yes, they did. Glim Tipton wrote some on his own, and obviously Ripper doing a fine job with KK's Priest. And who else could do this? Um, and Scott Travis was a great drummer, but no, it's it's at number 22. So some way off from what, what I play the most with Glimpse of Judy's Priest. Next, in terms of age, is the oldest one, and it's Rockola. There's some good moments on this. Uh, as I said, they're not listed because they're, they're not good. It's just I don't play them as much. But there are, there's, a, there's one particular track on here, isn't there? Um, Run of the Mill. Run of the Mill off this album is superb. Um, and Rockola, I remember seeing, I remember seeing them on the Oracle Whistle Test. Rob Alford had long hair, lots of flowing chiffon tops and stuff, and uh, K.K. Downing had his floppy hat and stuff. It was the start, but it isn't an album that I, I play the most um, at all, really. Um, but 
There it is. That is at number 21 in my Judas Priest chart. Next at number 20 is a live album called A Touch of Evil. Now, I know a lot of people that do ranking videos always don't include live albums. To me, if I play albums, I don't see live albums as not part of the band's catalogue. Um, it's not a separate it's not a separate thing when the live albums are released they went into the charts or they didn't they didn't go into a live album chart so live albums to me are an important part of the any ranking process and this one a touch of evil live um it's it's a good it's a great live album but it isn't as good as some of the other live albums by judas priest and i don't play it that often and that's why this one is at number 19. The next one is also a live album, which I do have on DVD, which I prefer the DVD, and it is Battle Cry. Um, so Battle Cry is at number 20. I've actually got those the wrong way round. <laughs> but um, I don't think it matters, to be honest. Because both of these to me are roughly the kind of same that I've I'm glad I've got them. In fact, when that Correct me if I'm wrong here, but the really big, ginormous um, Judas Priest got everything in his box set. I think one of these was missing, wasn't it? Either Touch of Evil, I think it was, or could be Battle Cry. But to me, they're kind of, they're on the par, they're on a level. So the fact I've got them mixed up is is how I see them. I see them as being like number 19 or number 20, and it just varies on how I, how I play them, really. Next, though, at number 18 is... Uh, an album that some of you might be surprised that it's where it is, well maybe not, and it is Ram It Down. And I do have this on vinyl somewhere. Someone, uh, a, a, a rep gave me a copy of this. This is a promo um, for not, which was not for sale. And when did this come out? 1988 was it? I, featuring Johnny Be Good, an interesting arrangement, but I did, I didn't connect to this and I think if you're going to have a song on there called Heavy Metal um, you just think it's got to be the best heavy metal song ever written to have the nerve the audacity to call a song heavy metal I know Sammy Hager did this but his was I preferred his Love Zone Come and Get It Hard as Iron I'm a Rocker Love You to Death Monsters of Rock however it does have one song on here and I'm not going to say one redeeming feature, but it does have one song on here that has remained or dived in and out of the Judas Priest set list for years, really. And that is Blood Red Skies, the opening song on side two on the vinyl version. Um, that song is absolutely um, incredible. It really, really is. Um, and live is fantastic, and I think it features one of Rob Halford's finest vocal deliveries as well. But I, I absolutely, I absolutely love that. It's about eight minutes long, isn't it? But I think it the way it starts, and it's got that kind of drum machine on it. But I, I absolutely love that song. I, that is the you know, if you we were doing a best song from that album, it would be that, and it would be Blood Red Skies. And so that is at number eighteen in my rundown of Judas Priest albums. The next one at number 17, which I, I do have on vinyl as well, but I don't think I've got it near me, which is typical, it's been misfiled, um, is Point of Entry. I, And this is the interesting thing about this, because I remember them doing um, Don't Go on um, Tiz Wars or something like that. And I've, I bought the single Don't Go, and I was disappointed with that single. I thought, is this really Judas Priest? But on the B side of Don't Go was a, was Desert... No, it wasn't. <laughs> the B side was Solar Angels, wasn't it? And Solar Angels has that kind of really double-track riffage at the beginning. I thought that was a great track. So I, I was excited about this album. And although it's this far down my list at the moment, at number 17 in my list, my chart... It has some great moments on it. Heading out to the highway. Hot rocking, mm, not so sure. Turning circles, but Desert Plains. Desert Plains is one of my favourite Judas Priest tracks. 
um, the, the, the lyrical delivery, the rhythm of it, the the everything about that song. You know, was it that song "Mountain Thunder"? The way he says it, and the you know the the motor between his thighs and whatever. I can't remember the exact lyrics, but but I. It's not in here, is it? But I absolutely love that song. I absolutely love that track. Probably is on here, isn't it? And as I'm, as this is my ranking video for Judas Priest, I'm going to go in and find it if I can. Um, yes, White Mountain Thunder echoes my quest. My body aches, but I'll not rest. Court slides to guide me till sunrise leads. My passion screams. My heart it bleeds. Um, that's it. What, the engine roars between my thighs. Desert plains. Brilliant. Absolutely fantastic, um, and I I played that such a lot. Um, as I say, I've got it on vinyl somewhere. I don't know where it is. Um, you say yes all the way, and it starts to kind of flounder a bit. Then, and there's a track on there, isn't it? I think Troubleshooter is a bit like ACDC. So it's it's kind of remained as something that I do play quite a bit, but in recent years, it's dropped down the chart. So there it sits at number 17. Now I know the next one is going to cause some oh my god, but it's just the way it's just the way I see it. And it is Painkiller is at number 16 in my Judas Priest countdown to number 1. Why? Um I love the title song and I have to say the title song Painkiller is one of the best definitions of a heavy metal song probably ever written. It has everything, the, the drumming, the, the start, the riffs, the soloing, the, the vocal delivery, that is heavy metal. Painkiller from Painkiller by Judas Priest is a definition, in a way, of Judas Priest metal. But in a way, my feeling of what Judas Priest heavy metal was, this was kind of, this was something different. So I know for a lot of people, this is... This is the top of the mountain because of where you came in on listening to heavy metal. I'm from the 70s. So heavy metal to me, as it was described in magazines and newspapers at the time, was like anything from status quo to deep purple. And obviously when we got to the mid 80s and we had Anthrax and Metallica and Megadeth, that was also heavy metal. But it, it was a different kind of heavy metal, wasn't it? And Judas Priest were taking heavy metal somewhere else and beyond this point of course we had bands like death and obviously opeth so this i understand is pure judas priest heavy metal but it is not an album that i play that often um outside of the title track which i know i bump into on live albums all over the place but it isn't so that is painkiller which sits at number 16. at number 15 is uh, a more recent one if I've got it near me I have which was Redeemer of Souls which I bought twice I thought this was a real return to form um, the extra stuff the extra disc didn't sound that priesty I suppose um, but as I still I still dip into this and the cover and the everything being in uppercase is what you'd expect from Rob Halford's words and stuff. But I think this is a this is a great album, um, and it's and it's sitting at number fifteen in my chart. The next one is also it's not I'm going to say it's more recent priest, but you know what I mean. It probably isn't. It, Angel of Retribution. Now I I didn't buy this at the time. Because I read the review, which said that Loch Ness was like one of the worst disasters in modern metal history or something. So I thought, well, oh, God, I'm not buying that. And I actually found this in a car boot sale, I have to say. And I thought, well, it was three, three pounds, I think it was. So I came home and put it on. Judas Rising, Deal with the Devil, Revolution, Worth Fighting For, Demonizer, Wills of Fire, Angel, Hellrider, my God. It's... And this is obviously where Rob Halford reappeared. Absolutely stonking, busting heavy metal album. Um, I really, really like this album. And as I say, it's sitting number 14 in my chart. And as I, as I talk to the camera now, I'm thinking this might be the one I play after I finish this video. You really should hear that. 
if you if you kind of fold it away. Um, next, after um, Angel Retribution, is this one, Defenders of the Faith. I bought this at the time because uh, apparently I had a chance to win three Suzuki motorbikes with the entry form that was inside the record, which I think I've still got the entry form here. Here you go, everybody. Should you want to enter it, go find a TARDIS near you, um, and off you go. But yeah, I what did I think of this? Free Will Burning, I loved. I remember seeing the video, Jawbreaker, Rock Hard Drive, Through the Sentinel. It's got some good stuff on, and if I'm... If I'm going to be really honest with you, this is the CD one. Get this. This is a deluxe version that used to be about five quid, which includes um, the Long Beach Arena concert from the 1984. Um, it's great, um, and the remastering is really good. Get that version. But this is an album by Judas Priest that kind of moves up and down very fluid a lot of the things I'm talking about this part of my Judas Priest chart are quite fluid um, and this is one of them sometimes I go with this album sometimes I don't but um, so that is where's that one where am I um, that is Defenders of the Faith at number 13 in my chart so what is at number 12 number 12 um, is Stained Class Exciter, which used to be played in all the rock discos and, and rock clubs in Birmingham, where I was. And this was probably where I started when I was growing up with Priest. I kind of started to leave them a little bit with this one. I'm not sure why. I've always liked the cover. Um, White Heat, Better Than You, Better Than Me, which, of course, is the cover version of Spooky Tooth's track from Spooky 2 Invader, Saints in Hell and Beyond the Realms of Death which of course is a classic track I, it's, a, it's kind of on that I one day hope they remix I felt that the mix was always a bit lightweight com compared with the material that's on it it's heavy metal isn't it I just felt it was a bit lightweight um, but Stained Class is at number 12 next it's another one that I have on vinyl, but whether I've managed to find it, oh, I have. I think it's got a different different title in um, America. Is it uh, Hellbent for Leather, it might be called. This is Killing Machine. Um, and this one, I mean, come on, everybody. Look at the poses on the back. It's pretty cheesy, um, especially... Glenn and uh, Rob there and it also had Evening Star on it didn't it which I felt was a bit as if they were trying too hard to be a hit single however Delivering the Goods Rock Forever Hellbent for Leather Take on the World burn it, Burning Up Burning Up's fantastic isn't it Killing Machine and Running Wild Running Wild is one of the best songs by Judas Priest I absolutely love that and this is one that which at the time I kind of it would have been further down the chart it's at number 11 now is a great Judas Priest album the next one is at number 10 I have to say I'm surprised actually it's not higher than this um, if you did ask me about a couple of years ago I think it might have been in the top 5 and it is Nostradamus um, this is the two CD book version or were they all like this? I don't know. I think this is something that will be seen in the years to come as being classic Judas Priest. I really do believe that. Production wise, it is immense and immaculate. It also features some absolutely fantastic heavy metal and also one of my favourite Judas Priest songs of all time is on this album, and that track is Alone. It's achingly beautiful. It's achingly full of melancholy and angst and the human condition. And Rob Halford sings like a, the rock god that he is. 
alone from Nostradamus makes this essential. It's it's the worth the admission price alone for that track. But there are other ones, of course, on there as well. Revelation, Pestilence and um, Plague, New Beginnings, Future Mankind. It's some people have said it's too long. It would have made a better single album. Maybe there are some parts where there's not enough light and shade, not enough faster tracks, how it's been sequenced, perhaps. But I think this is fantastic. And I know when I posted this on the community tab on my YouTube channel, um, it had more comments, I think, than anything else I'd put on the community tab. I think a lot of people support this album. And I think wonder whether KK Downing, the fact that they couldn't support it because it didn't sell like they thought it was going to, and the idea of going around the world and doing this in complete live never happened, whether that was part of the, the falling out. But this is great. It's at number 10. And in fact, if, if I did this video in a couple of weeks, maybe it'd be higher than that. Right, next. Next at number nine is another live album. This is Priest Live from the Turbo Tour. This is relentless. This is just like a steam train. This is just perfect. This brings the Turbo tracks to life in a way that they weren't on the official record. But, you know, adds in the cold, hang out for the highway, metal gods, breaking the law, love bites, some heads are going to roll, the sentinel, private property, rocky all around the world, electric eye, turbo lover, free will burning, parental guidance, living after midnight, you've got another thing coming, screaming for vengeance, rock hard, ride free, hell bent for leather, all on one record. I have to say, whoever did the design for this did a design that when I saw this at Virgin Records at the time, I just walked past it thinking, oh, God, another Judas Priest live album. Don't need another one of those. What did I know? So since having this, um, buying it, well, probably about 20 years ago now, um, which obviously is not as long as old as the album, I think it's, I think it captures Priest at this point um, in a way that, nothing you know of all the, the other stuff that comes on tagged on to the other kind of live stuff the, the turbo um album for instance this is this is essential this is an essential piece of priest i mean and a, you know look at them priest live absolutely great live album and that is sitting at number eight isn't it yes it, no it isn't that's at number nine, because at number eight is this one, Firepower, which is very recent, isn't it? Um, I've got that on, I think I have that on vinyl near me. I do. <sighs> Firepower, yes, as, as kind of as joined at the hip to accept pandemic type riff. But overall, over four sides or this... This showed that Judas Priest had turned, when I say turned a corner, they turned a corner a while before this, uh, obviously, but this really cemented the fact that they made one of the best heavy metal albums of that year, and it still sounds great. And it's also interesting when I talked about Invincible Shield, the amount of people that said it isn't quite as good as this, because it shows how powerful the Priest are in their twilight of their career. And when I say twilight of their career, um, I hope they keep going for many, many years to come. And based on what they're doing at the moment, why shouldn't they? Next, after Firepower, at number seven, is British Steel. Now, this was an album which wouldn't have even probably, it would have sat at the bottom of my chart uh, a few years ago. I, and why is that? Why did I have such a downer on it? It was because of things like um, Living After Midnight. Sorry, but it wasn't something that really, really got to me. And there was another one, wasn't there? There was another track on this that did it. Where is it? Did it, did it, did it. Breaking the Law. Yeah. Breaking the Law and that video with them like... It's a cheesy video. And because I heard those songs first, this is where I kind of, at the time... Because remember, I am from this period... I kind of wasn't sure. And the picture of um, Rob Halford with his kind of Tim Brooke, Tim Brooke Taylor hair, haircut on the back, I thought, mm, I don't know. I don't, I, I, I've only got so much money. 
it's 1980, there's so many heavy metal albums, great stuff coming out, I left it. Then, of course, I saw the band much later on and started to listen to a lot more Priest. And this is the version you need to get everybody, the 30th anniversary version, um, which opens out, I don't know if I'll be able to do this, but I'll have a go, into this kind of like cross effect. And obviously the, it's the whole of the album live is on here. I'll just see if I can tidy that away. I can't, I can. Let's put it to one side. Um, but it's got the, it's got a 30th anniversary seed of DVD. They played every single track off the album for this live and it just brought it to life. And in fact, it was, let's have a look. Where was it? Steeler. The track Steel Alive was fantastic and it made me go back to the album and obviously realise that Rapid Fire was fantastic and you don't have to be old to be wise. Absolutely brilliant stuff, of course. Metal Gods, Grinder, United, was a, that was the track I was thinking. I was thinking, oh, it's a bit obvious football chanty stuff and they'd obviously done that before we take on the world, hadn't they? Um, but The Rage and The Steeler, and The Rage is quite different, isn't it? Almost like reggae in places, but... So anyway, British Steel has made it into the top 10 and is at number seven in my chart. At number six is Turbo, which I know might be a surprise for some people. And I'll be honest with you, um, in case some of you are thinking, God, does he really think all of those tracks are, are, are like up there with top draw Judas Priest? Um, I can I can see that some of them like and uh, parental guidance is a bit you know bit of a you know lightweight thing I guess. However, Turbo Lover, Locked In, um, Rocky Around the World, Out in the Cold, Out in the Cold. This is the um, anniversary edition with the two with the two live discs on by the way this is the one to get but out in the cold is fantastic obviously on priest live it's even better but white uh, wild nights and hot crazy days hot for love and reckless are great and i've always liked it at the time um when i bought this a lot of my friends because i bought this when it came out didn't like it but I thought it was a new priest. I thought they were pushing the boundaries. They weren't retreading what they'd done before. And I love that. A bit like Nostradamus. I love it when bands take risks, you know, and because that's where I'm from in the 70s. Bands used to go, well, we've done that. So the next album needs to be something else. And I think what we've got in 2024 is a lot of times the bands just think, well, we, we just stick to a template. But I, I felt this was priest trying something different. And I do feel that it sounds great and this has always been up there I've never got tired of this at all so that is at number six number five is another live album and it's Unleashed in the East uh, Unleashed in the studio some people have unfairly said that I just need to move make a bit of room for myself here if I can um, have I got that? yes this is a a Canadian import which I bought from a shop in Birmingham because they, they were selling it off cheap and and I thought because I'd missed out on a couple of Priest albums at the time I thought well this will be a good catch up and it's unbelievable I don't care if it's recorded in the studio I think Rob went back to do some of his vocals because he got a bad cold or something but Exciter has never sounded better Running Wild is incredible The Sinner with K.K. Dowling's tremolo arm extravaganza is captured here with such panache. Ripper and the green Manalishi with the two prong crank. That song was almost like designed for Judas Priest. And here it just sounds immense. Diamonds and Rust, a bit of a reprieve there, and then Fixing of Changes, which is probably my second favourite Judas Priest song ever and Genocide again these old riffs where they were from Sad Wings and Tyrant Unleashed in the East absolutely superb essential 
It doesn't seem to get mentioned in, in these kind of live album best, you know, albums you have to have, and it should it should have been a bloody double for a start. I mean, this does have some extra tracks with Rock Forever, um, Delivering the Goods, Hellbent for Leather, Starbreaker, but it should, anyway. From there, I go to number four. And number four is... Sad Wings of Destiny. Look at that cover. That cover is... Pure 70s hard rock heavy metal, isn't it? Prelude, Tyrant, Genocide, Epitaph, Island of Domination, Victim of Changes, Ripper, Dream of Deceiver, Deceiver. I always thought that Victim of Changes was the first track on side one. I know I'm not alone in that, but I really did think that. I think it was the way that on my record, the labels were put the wrong way round. So I put on technically what is side two, thinking it was side one. And to me, I can't go back any other way now. Um, Victim of Changes is how this album starts I bought this because of that because of the cover and the fact that they looked like that I had never heard anything from it I just took a chance came home, I didn't have much money I had a choice of going out for a few beers or buying a record and staying in so it was a Friday night and I just took a chance they just looked that silhouette of Rob Halford and the way that KK looks with his floppy hat and everything, I just thought, I'm going to give it a go. I went home, put it on, and I thought I was listening to the cross between... I thought I was, it was the cross between Black Sabbath, Deep Purple and Led Zeppelin. The, th the holy trinity of, of British metal at that point had suddenly had a baby and it was Judas Priest. Because the vocals on Dream of Deceiver... But Victim of Changes, that whole, the whole arrangement of that song, that riffage is just so exciting. And the soloing and, you know, and the, when it slows down at the end, it's still to this day. And it goes into that riff again, Victim, and, and Rob Halford screams Victim of Changes. It's, it's sending shivers down my spine now as I talk to you without hearing it. It is incredible. Some things are a bit kind of epitaph, the way he sang was like, I remember a lot of my friends going, well, that's a bit weird, isn't it? Um, so it's hard to, it's hard, it was very hard for me to decide how I do the, the last few albums on this ranking video because there is so much emotional baggage attached to this that I have to try and let go of 50 years of listening almost and think if this came out now, if this came out today as a Judas Priest album, what would I think of all the tracks? Would I play them all? And there are some things I would probably skip perhaps now. Again, you have to look at it and think, this is heavy, Judas Priest heavy metal. So this is an album, whereas now if they were doing an album like this, Victim of Changes, Ripper, and Island of Domination and Genocide Tyrant would be there. But would the other tracks... So again, it's just things to think about. But this is, what, where have I put it? Number four. At the moment, it's number four in my Judas Priest ranking video. So what is at number three? At number three is an album that up until uh, a few months ago was number one. Because when I did a video, um, I've actually covered this one, sorry, I've covered this one before. Sin After Sin. I've done a separate video on this, and the reason why I've done a separate video is because I said at the time that this was my favourite Judas Priest album. So it has dropped down to number three since I did that video. But why was it my favourite? It was my favourite because of the track Sinner. A typical kind of not-too-difficult riff to learn. But the, 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 the tortured Strat from K.K. Downing in the middle, Starbreaker, The Last Rose of Summer, and what I've just said about Sad Wings, whereas if they did the album now, would they put some of these songs on? The reason why this has stood the test of time with me is it's so varied. There's so much variation. There's so much light and shade, which you don't get now with, with a lot of hard rock and metal bands. The Last Rose of Summer is a ballad, but it's beautiful. It just works. 
And I mentioned, uh, I've mentioned what songs have been my favourite, nearly my favourite Judas Priest song. Victim of Change is number two. So what is my number one favourite Judas Priest song of all time? It's actually Let Us Pray, the opening track of side two of Sin After Sin. That riff to me is just awesome. It's fast, double bass drum riff, and the, the way that Rob Halford sings over the top of it. He never got bored of it. Call for the priest ordeal, here come the tears. Oh, God, here come the tears. And, and, and Disney Aggressor, produced by Roger Glover. Essential, absolutely essential stuff. That is at number three, sin after sin. So what is at number two? At number two is Screaming for Vengeance, which a few months ago would have been further down the list, but I've just fallen in love with this album again. Um, this is my original vinyl one. Um, this was being played in, in pubs all over the Birmingham where I was growing up. It even came with a poster. And, um, and I just absolutely fell in love with it. The Helion, Electric Eye, Riding on the Wind, Bloodstone. Take these chains, pain and pleasure, scream for vengeance, you've got another thing coming. Very close, closing in on the world of ACDC in a way, really 4-4 rhythm, really simple stuff, not what you might expect from Judas Priest, but they make it their own with Fever and Devil Child coming up next. Fever's great, isn't it? If you're going to buy it, um, I would get this version, which I'm surprised they didn't make more of a fuss about it. This is the CD and DVD version. So the DVD features a concert from this era and it sounds fantastic. And also the remastering of the album, it gives it a real boost as well. But that is definitely my number two Judas Priest album at this point in time. Um, there isn't one bad track on it. This, it's, it is the reason why it has floated to number two in my Judas Priest ranking video is because I feel it is the nearest cousin, brother or sister to what I put at number one, which is Invincible Shield, which I know for a lot of people out there is going to be sacrilegious. But as I said at the very beginning, my ranking video is based on what I'm playing the most and how they make me feel. If this album had come out in 1976 when I bought Sad Wings of Destiny, Judas Priest would have been the biggest band in the known universe. Obviously, they wouldn't have done, would they? Because we're now in 2024. But what I'm trying to say is the, the, the sequencing, the quality of songwriting, the riffs, the performances... When I look back at all the Judas Priest albums I've talked about, there's always kind of some bits that I don't know I'm trying to say here that don't quite connect the dots. This new album connects all the dots. And I know that for many of you who watched my video where I reviewed this and went a little bit over the top on it, very few people actually said, Phil, you're talking absolute pants. Um, I know... I know there's going to be other albums or people will say, but again, this is my personal ranking of all the Judas Priest albums that I own and how I perceive them and based on what I play the most. And at the moment, considering how much music I have around me, I'm still playing this every single day. In fact, what it's doing is it's making me play other Priest albums and albums that I haven't played for a while and now been given a spin. So number one at the time of doing this is Invincible Shield, which happens to also be their latest album. Who would have thought that was even possible? But there you go. So thank you for watching and thank you for being here. Let me know what you think. Uh, let me know what yours are. You don't have to do the top 23, obviously. Top five is fine. If you want to go further, then please do. But thank you. And please subscribe. You can share this video. Check out the website, the podcast. Join the Facebook group to talk with like-minded music fans. You can support me via Patreon or become a YouTube member. Or just make a donation via Ko-fi. And that really helps me do more of these 
videos. But remember, music is the healer and the doctor. So keep spinning those discs, and I shall see you all very, very soon.